good morning friends today we are starting with a new chapter and that is control and coordination for class 10 cbse board and this is the second chapter of biology part of your syllabus it is a very short but an interesting chapter and uh, as you know the name of the chapter i have already written on the board is control and coordination so i would just like to explain what is meant by control and coordination first control we all know that our bo body is made up of various organs various tissues and various systems which have to work in sync with each other they have to be uh, in control of each other they have to work in coordination with each other so that is what is meant by control that there is there has to be some particular uh, a system in the body which controls the working of all the other organs that are present inside the body so that is actually what is meant by control and by coordination we mean the working together of the various body parts in sync with each other like the digestive system has to work in coordination with the uh, circulatory system which has to work in coordination with the excretory system also like whatever food we are eating the digested food has to be transported to all the parts of the body and whatever waste is left it it is equally important that that waste also has to be thrown out of the body so that is exactly what is meant by control and coordination so in multicellular organisms like us we are basically going to talk about the human body as far as control and coordination in animals is concerned and then we'll also uh, discuss about how control and coordination takes place in animals okay since uh, many of you have joined here i would like to ask you a question over here can anyone tell me how does control and coordination take place in our body which organ or what system is responsible for the control and coordination of our body yeah anybody there okay uh, there's an answer coming in nervous system brain great so you all know that brain is the control center of our body the brain controls the working of the entire body what is the brain actually made up of what is the brain made up of can anyone tell me what is the brain made up of when you are saying nervous system that's also correct so uh, basically my question is what is the nervous system made up of yeah what is the nervous system made up of can anyone tell me okay there's a request coming in ma'am please start chapter 12 after control and coordination we'll be going with chapter number 12 okay vanshika punia is giving the answer it's made up of nerve cells okay yeah neurons so basically the brain or the nervous system in our body is made up of specialized cells which are called neurons so the name of the cell to be specific is not a nerve cell because now you are in class 10 so you need to learn some technical terms as well the technical name of the cells which constitute the nervous system is neuron right so if you are asked what is the basic structure of our nervous system you will not write nerve cell instead you will write neuron that is the correct answer okay so uh, let's start with the structure of neuron first you people must have studied this structure in your junior classes also so i request you to draw it along with me so that you can understand how to make that structure nicely and properly <clears throat> this is what a neuron actually looks like it's a star shaped cell which has a long tail so this is how we make this cell 
there are the extensions of the cell we are drawing the extensions you will draw it just like you make the branches of a tree randomly there is no particular way of making it it's just branching that we are trying to show these are the branches that the cytoplasmic extensions is the name given to these then this is the cell body and in the center there is a nucleus over here and uh, the cytoplasm is granular so we are going to put some dots in the cytoplasm like this the best way to learn how to draw a diagram is to draw side by side when someone is making it so that you get an idea of how to start and what should be the exact dimensions of the various parts involved so this is how you are going to draw it now our diagram is complete now i'm going to start with the labeling part of this diagram these extensions that are coming out these are known as the dendrites please be very careful when you note down the spellings these are the dendrites then this you all know is the nucleus the small granules that we have drawn in the cytoplasm these are known as the nissels granules the names of these dots are nissels granules and collectively this part the star shaped part is known as the cyton or the cell body so i'll just rub this off because we don't need this anymore the name given to this part is the cyton and it is also known as the cell body then this long tail like structure that you are seeing over here is known as the axon and further labeling is this box like structures that have been drawn these are the medullary sheath it is a, a sheath or a covering that is made up of a protein myelin and it is known as the medullary sheath and in between these gaps are there these gaps are known as the node of ranvier this gap this gap where the myelin sheath is not present that portion is known as the node of ranvier and these are the nerve endings so this is the structure of a neuron so we have drawn the diagram of a neuron on the board and you people can note it down in case you are not drawing it side by side you can take a screenshot or you can also copy this afterwards once the video is uploaded so this is how you draw the diagram of a neuron and in all the animals the nervous system is made up of nervous tissue and the nervous tissue is further made up of neurons so this is the first topic for the day that we have covered what is the structure of a neuron now if you get a question like explain the structure of a neuron it's obvious that you will be drawing this diagram that i made on the board in addition you have to explain the structure you will be telling about the cell body it contains cytoplasm it has a large spherical nucleus and granules are present which are called nissels granules then you will come to the dendrites these dendrites this is the second part of the neuron it they are short tapering branched protoplasmic extensions stretching out from the cell body so these are nothing but the extensions of the cytoplasm or the extensions of the protoplasm and they receive messages from the receptors and they transmit the messages further through the neuron to the next neuron this will be studying in detail after some time and the third part of the neuron is the axon it is a single long protoplasmic process which arises from the cell body 
and it conducts the nerve impulses away from the cell body it has an insulated uh, sheath of myelin around it which is made up of fats and proteins so this myelin sheath is actually made up of proteins as well as fats so this is about the structure of a neuron so how does a neuron help in the transmission of impulses now we know what a neuron looks like what is the structure of a neuron like but how does it help in the conduction or in the control and coordination of our body suppose you touch a hot object what happens your hand gets withdrawn who is responsible for this it is the control and coordination system of your body or the nervous system that results in such responses right so how does this take place in such a short time that you can't even realize that the impulse has been transmitted through your body it is actually taking place through a series of neurons we all know that we have nerves in our body and those nerves they are made up of neurons and the neurons are arranged end to end so this is one neuron the diagram is complete i'll be rubbing the labeling part since i need to explain it you don't uh, need to copy the diagram that i'm modifying it now you don't need to make that modification with you because that modification is just for the explanation part okay so i'll be rubbing this uh, labeling part over here because i need some space actually these neurons they just allow one way movement of the impulse so that means the impulse moves from the cyton towards the axon and then through the nerve endings it moves on to the next neuron so over here there's another neuron which is aligned with the first one so i'm just drawing the basic structure since you already know the main structure what it looks like so these are the then rights of the next neuron over here now what happens when the hand feels something hot or we touch something hot accidentally there are sensory neurons in our fingers or in our skin we all know we have some sense organs five sense organs uh, eyes ears nose tongue and skin and the skin is also the largest organ of our body and all over our skin we have sense uh, sensory neurons so whenever something hot touches our finger or our skin the electrical impulse is generated in the dendrites of the neuron and through that dendrite the impulse travels through the axon it is actually jumping over these myelin sheaths like this finally reaching the nerve endings once it reaches the nerve endings it is transmitted to the next neuron but you will be surprised to know that the nerve endings and the dendrites of these two neurons they have a small gap in between and that gap is known as a synapse so what is a synapse a synapse is a microscopic gap between the nerve endings of one neuron and the dendrites of the next neuron so that is strange actually that how does a gap allow the transmission of nerve impulse can anyone tell me how does the transmission of impulse take place if there is a gap between the two neurons yeah anyone there the electrical impulses are generated they are traveling through one neuron and finally there's a gap here which is known as a synapse so how does the synapse conduct that impulse okay uh, srini nala naladala is giving the answer neurons have a membrane featuring an axon and dendrite specialized structures designed to transmit and receive information neurons release chemicals known as neurotransmitters into synapse very good and that is exactly the correct answer once the impulse reaches the nerve endings a chemical called a neurotransmitter substance is released over here and that neurotransmitter acts as a stimulus for the next neurons then writes and in this way the impulse is given to the next neuron similarly the next neuron at its nerve endings it will again release the neurotransmitter and it transmits the impulse to the third neuron and this process continues till the time the impulse reaches our central nervous system that is made up of the brain and the 
spinal cord. So this term over here, neurotransmitter is very, very important. And many times this question has been asked in the exam, how does transmission of impulse take place across a synapse? So the first thing over here is that you need to know what is a synapse. So just quickly, can anyone uh, tell me what is a synapse? Yeah, quickly. I've explained it just now. So I want you to give me the answer now. What is a synapse? Can anyone tell me? Okay, gap between two neurons. It's a microscopic gap between the two neurons and you have to specify which part of the neuron between the nerve endings of one neuron and the dendrites of the next neuron. So that is how you define it. And at the end, at the nerve endings of one neuron, the because of the impulse that is traveling, uh, chemically secreted, which is known as a neurotransmitter substance, which creates a stimulus in the next neuron and which helps in the transmission of the nerve impulse till the central nervous system. So I hope this topic is clear to everyone how the impulse is transmitted across a synapse. Yes? So I'll be rubbing this figure now. Okay. Now there's another term over here which is known as a neuromuscular junction. As the name suggests, neuro stands for the neuron and muscular stands for muscle. So it is actually the point where the nerve meets the muscle. Okay, uh, there's someone asking me to explain it again. In case you're having any trouble, you can see the video again once it is uploaded. Okay, so this is a muscle that I'm drawing on the board and you can find this diagram in your NCRT book as well. This is an important diagram for exams. Again, I'm uh, asking you to practice this. Okay, so this is something that I've drawn on the board. This is a muscle sheath. And this is the axon. So can anyone tell me what is this part? Can anyone tell me what is this part? What will you label this as? Yeah, quickly. If this is the axon, which part of a neuron is this? Yes, this is the nerve ending. So we'll label this as nerve ending. Now, the point where the nerve ending meets the muscle fiber is known as a neuromuscular junction. So this is the neuromuscular junction. Just like synapse is present between two neurons, similarly, a microscopic gap is also present between the nerve endings and the muscle. And what happens over here? Again, the same chemical neurotransmitter substance is released. And that release of neurotransmitter creates an electrical impulse in the muscle as well. And the muscle creates the response either by contracting or by relaxing whatever is the desired response depending upon the location of the muscle and its function. So over here also at the neurotransmitter junction also, sorry, at the neuromuscular junction also, the chemical called neurotransmitter substance plays a very, very important role. So between one neuron and the next, the neurotransmitter substance helps in the conduction of the impulses. And similarly, at the last junction where the response is to be generated, that is between the uh, nerve ending of the last neuron and the muscle where we actually want the response to be generated. Because I started with the example that accidentally if you touch a hot object, what will happen? Your hand withdraws. So finally, it is the muscles of your hand which are contracting and which are responsible for the withdrawal movement of your hand. 
right so it is because of this chemical only that the muscles they get the message that you have to contract and you have to pull the hand away but all this process is so so quick that we don't even realize that it first goes from the sense organ to the central nervous system and then the response travels back to the organ to create the response in a flash of a second it happens and we just can't imagine how quick it happens right so i hope everybody has got a yeah what question is there so if i ask you a question what is the pathway for the transmission of impulse in a neuron what will be the pathway we can represent it in the form of a flow chart like the stimulus is first received by the dendrites then it goes to the axon obviously through the cyton then nerve endings are there and after that there's a synapse and across the synapse it reaches the dendrites of the next neuron so this is actually what is the pathway of a nerve impulse across a neuron so this is how the nerve impulse travels from the dendrites through the cyton to the axon axon to nerve endings then a synapse comes in place and from the synapse it transmits to the next neuron then writes of the next neuron by secreting the neurotransmitter substance so i hope this is clear to everyone okay <clears throat> now coming to the next topic we are going to talk about the types of neurons okay so this is the next topic that is the types of neurons neurons are basically of three different types first is the sensory neurons second is the motor neurons and the third is the relay neuron so these are the three types of neurons which you should know and what are the functions of these three types what do they actually do sensory neurons as the name suggests they are sensory in nature they are the ones who carry the stimulus from the sense organs to the central nervous system right so what will we write over here sensory neurons carry impulses from the sense organs to the central nervous system this is the function of the sensory neurons then motor neurons they carry the impulses in the form of a response back from the central nervous system to the uh, effector organ to the organ where the effect is to be produced so this is the function of the motor neuron like suppose again i'm taking the same example so that you can understand it nicely my hand touches a hot object the skin receives the stimulus so the sensory neurons or the sensory nerve which is made up of sensory neurons will carry that sensation to the brain the brain creates the response and then from the central nervous system another nerve that is the motor nerve will bring the response back to the effector organ that is my hand in this case and my hand it gets withdrawn so this is how it happens now you'll ask me what is the function of relay neurons then you people must be having relay races in your school where there's a team with four partners 100 100 meters each partner has to run so that is what exactly a relay neuron does it connects the sensory and the motor neuron with a baton in the hand A relay race is conducted with a baton in the hand, and that baton is actually the 
relay neuron so once the impulse travels to the central nervous system in the central nervous system relay neurons are present which connect the sensory nerve with the motor nerve so they provide that link between these two neurons and that is what is known as the relay neurons so they connect the sensory and the motor neurons inside the cns and what is cns cns is the central nervous system right so this is about the various types of neurons now the next topic that we have to take up is the human nervous system in which we'll be studying in detail the structure of the brain as well so i'll just introduce you to the topic and as far as the detailing about the structure of the brain and the functions of the brain or the various parts of the brain are concerned we'll be taking it up in the next lecture so uh, let's just start with what is actually the human nervous system made up of so the next topic that we are going to start with is human nervous system this is the most important system in our body actually now the human nervous system it is actually made up of two parts first is the central nervous system and the second is the peripheral nervous system now what is the difference between the two the central nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord so the brain and the spinal cord it constitutes the cns and all the remaining nerves that are present in our body they constitute the peripheral nervous system all the nerves that are connecting the various organs of our body to the brain or to the spinal cord or the effector nerves or the motor nerves that are coming from the central nervous system to the organs they all constitute the peripheral nervous system now in next lecture we are going to start with the central nervous system in detail because it's a big topic i will not start with it today the next lecture will be uh, comprising of the structure of the brain the functions of the brain and what is actually the central nervous system made up of it's a very very important uh, lecture so i request none of you to miss it so ensure that you study what we have done today in case you are having any problem you can just uh, see the video again so that your doubts get cleared so that when we join in for the next lecture your doubts are absolutely clear and we can continue with the chapter without any doubts